While this video guide provides information necessary to obtain the Canadian Ministry of Justice Handgun Safety Certificate, it cannot comprehensively relate all pertinent handgun safety practices or laws. You are urged to read the Handgun Safety Certificate Study Guide, seek professional firearms training in your community, and visit the Canadian Ministry of Justice website at www.canada.ca slash firearms. Simply viewing this guide will not make you a safe gun owner. Safety comes only from carefully following all applicable rules and laws. Hi, welcome to the Windsor Park Coronavirus Patrol Force tutorial on how to operate with guns. So, let's just start with the most basic concepts. Loading. Well, so what, what is loading? Let's just first start off with that. Well, loading is effectively inserting a foreign body into our firearm. You're going to want to do it like so. I'm going to hear that nice clicking sound. It should be quite firm, hard, and should honestly be very much, uh, well, how do I say this? Very accented, very distinct. But, well, let's just try that again. Take the Take our weapon, take our foreign body, hear that, it's distinct. When loading our weapon or firearm, we want to make sure that the chamber has no other objects or foreign bodies within it. Make sure and check with your finger there is nothing obstructing it, and actually even open up this, which will allow you to see an in-depth view inside of the firearm, and clear the chamber of any external bodies. After loading it, make sure that your uh, following the standard safety procedures of firearms. Whenever operating a firearm, please remember to always keep it unloaded. If it is loaded, it can actually explode and you may be killed. Unfortunately, due to the safety limitations of firearms, I will be unable to show you on uh, an on-site demonstration. Uh, unfortunately, we will have to head over to the shooting range. When transporting firearms by hand, Various safety methods must be followed that would otherwise not be applicable. When coming to a doorway, it is necessary to dismantle your firearm so as both hands are free to be able to operate the door. Notice how when bending down to carefully place your firearm to use the back and sack technique, maintaining eye contact perpendicular to the ground while maintaining your torso above your center of mass. By following this technique, the risk of a hernia is significantly reduced, which would otherwise be a detriment to a productive day. Remember to reassemble your firearm once you have cleared the doorway. Disassemble your firearm when passing no matter how small an obstacle. Well, now I'm gonna have to go prepare the gun. So to do this, we're gonna have to be really careful. We don't want any injuries. Trust me, those insurance costs are high. So now you wanna take the end part of the gun, make sure that it fits properly and check for any uh, possible mechanical or reliability issues. After doing so, you're going to want to firm, make sure that it is firmly attached to the weapon and pull slightly and check that it is fully 100% latched onto the weapon itself. Grab the clip, go to very, very, very carefully, sort of bang it in, listen to that extremely distinct sound that I was talking about earlier. Let's recap. To prepare for usage of our firearm, first take the end part of the gun and attach it firmly. Pull slightly afterwards to ensure that it will not fall off. Finally, when inserting your clip, listen for that distinct clicking sound, which will tell you that the magazine is fully inserted and safe. So now, how do we even use this? Well, to start off, let's just look at the very states of loading. Let's just take out our loaded magazine, 
which has been limited to five thanks to a pin put in to comply with Canadian laws and regulations. Uh, all uh, coronavirus patrol force officers or uh, members of the force will uh, actually be equipped with a non-lethal variant of this. This is uh, actually a, uh, a poisonous tube attached to the bullet, which uh, increases the aerodynamic uh, properties of it, i.e. it actually decreases the velocity, but it adds a little bit of a twist for anyone uh, who experiences the gun. Well, now let's get to the various states of loading. So let's just start off with the one I'm in right now. This is semi-loaded. By semi-loaded, it does not have the clip in, but is ready for the clip to be put inside and can be immediately put into action. You're going to want to make sure that it's in the back position in order to certify that it's in this. Not just that, but you have to pull the trigger, make sure it's not firing, and then make sure that there's no bullets in the chamber. So, what is this stage? Well, this is what we call the dummy stage, because there is no actual bullet. Now, the loaded stage involves there being a real live bullet, which could injure some people. Now, say, due to safety concerns and the high insurance costs associated with this uh, gun and the various, uh, various uh, types of firearms available, we will not be doing this right now. We unfortunately have not obtained a permit for uh, shooting this yet. However, if a bullet were in here, when you shoot, you'll have a bit of a recoil pushing it back, and the bullet would go forward and hit wherever you are aiming at, assuming that you are aiming properly, using a laser range finder. This is the most active stage. When it is in this point, it is a loaded, dangerous gun. At least within the stage of it being loaded and not completely ready, it at least cannot be shot at someone. If it is within this stage, if you point it at someone and you pull the trigger, they are uh, what the kids would call uh, done for or killed by the imposter who is quite sus for doing that act in front of many others. Once you have fired, it is within this stage. This is actually the first stage, although we do not recognize it as the first stage because it is not actually even within a state of readiness for anything. See, this stage is, what you want to do to reload it is followed by a movement. If there is no clip, you're going to want to load it like this. Insert the clip, make sure that it is in the proper direction and has a pin uh, in it to make sure that it uh, complies with legal regulations. Simply push it in after you've done this. And I repeat, never, ever point it at any live object. At this point, it is effectively a tiger on the prowl. Remember the three different stages. Semi-loaded, in which the firearm is in the back position and a magazine can be inserted. The second stage, the loaded stage, is extremely active, which exists when the firearm is moved into the forward position when a magazine is inserted. The final, not officially recognized stage, is actually the first, and involves moving the firearm into the back position once again, but this time after it has been discharged. Now let's try with some real bullets. However, before this, we're going to have to do some mandatory safety procedures. Number one, you're going to want to put on a nice pair of uh, really nice head uh, earmuffs. They'll protect your uh, ears from permanent hearing loss, uh, as well as possible damage from uh, the uh, simple, incredible wattage in terms of uh, hearing, uh, the decibel wattage uh, of uh, bullets. Now, once you put it on, if you're a policeman like me, you're going to want to put some sort of identification on that classifies you as a member of the police force. As this will actually show you that, yes, you are a member of the police force, uh, and that this will specifically signal to the overseer that uh, you are a policeman and that some different rules apply. After doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you're wearing a bulletproof vest. This is to ensure any sort of injuries uh, will simply be absorbed by the simple, incredible uh, thickness of the vest. Let's get this thing going. Remember, there's an extra step. You're going to want to make sure that the overseer of the shooting range knows that you're here. So you're going to want to signal to them using a handgun and then almost push a trigger down. The 
overseer will then signal after the uh, brief alarm to the following hand gestures. Five, signaling five bullets, which means that you are allowed to shoot five, only five bullets. Then the OK sign, which says that it is OK. Then the thumbs up sign, which signals good. This effectively means five rounds, OK, good. So if it is simply five rounds, OK, he simply has now noticed that you have now not followed safety procedures and that you should not be allowed to continue. When loading the weapon, you're going to want to make sure that it is down. If there's any jammings, simply, oh, hold on to there. Remember, that time it didn't go well because it wasn't in the proper state. Make sure it's within this state. Afterwards, put it like this, so put an angle and make sure there's no humans or persons around that area in which it... Make sure that approximately, say there's a circle around you, make sure approximately the place that you put it is one-fourth protected of that circle. Once you've heard the distinct sound of a loaded bullet, you're going to want to very carefully, once upwards, with that, with no people over here, safetyly load it. Next, with safety off, you are now allowed to engage for five bullets, which is the maximum you can have in a magazine. As you saw, the second bullet cannot fire. So now we're going to want to follow the standard safety procedure regarding stray bullets and or accidents. The first protocol you should always follow is to immediately disarm your weapon by removing the bottom part of it. Place it in a separate area and then place the gun down. Next, you're going to want to actually signal to the overseer that we are off shooting mode. So you're going to want to make basically the amount of bullets in total that you are authorized. Subtract the amount of bullets that you've shot that actually fired out, not ones that got jammed. Then signal to the overseer. Four, for example. Active shooting mode disengaged. After gaining permission from the overseer, you want to want to take off all equipment for those who have not managed to hear the overseer's message. You're going to actually want to take off all equipment that signifies that you are an active shooter. Because active shooting is disengaged, you're going to want to take off all protective equipment that may signal that you are an active shooter. This is to make sure that uh, people who have not heard the overseer's warning are informed of the uh, deactivation of active shooting. You're going to do it in a manner like this, whereas, for example, if you have a hat, you want to have the uh, muffled uh, ear attachments in the hat, just in order for uh, ease of access and in order to uh, overall increase the amount of space available. So, how do you actually fix a jam? So first of all, you're going to want to take it out of the after firing stage. Take it out, inspect the chamber. Does the chamber have a stray bullet stuck in there? You're going to want to inspect it using both hatches. So open this hatch, inspect the bullet, and then do it from the other. This can provide crucial information that you may not have seen from either of the sides. After doing so, you have a choice. You can either take it out this way by pulling it using one finger and pushing it down. However, I would not recommend this method. It does not maximize safety in the other, like the other way does. You're going to want to almost make your hands like this and almost shove them in. You're going to want to make sure that the thumb is almost perched like this to provide a strong support. You're going to want to now take your hands slowly almost push it out, then cup them around the bullet and slowly drag it down to decrease the chance of accidental exposure to lead. Once this has been done, you're going to want to put down the weapon to signify that it has now been deactivated. Go. So, now, now that this is, uh, we've done this, you're going to just want to make sure that there's no deficiencies or other problems present. So just quickly do a check that you may have learned when uh, going through firearm school, if you catch my meaning. Check this, put it in the standard load way, push it under, 
and make sure before that there's no bullets in the chamber. Double check that there are actually no bullets in the chamber using the hatch from on top and using the bottom hatch pointed to the ground. You're going to want to now pull the trigger and push your hands behind towards you in order to minimize the effect of recoil if there is a bullet, which is extremely unlikely due to the double factor. So after you have uh, laid it down and just to, just to show you again, you're going to want to go signal to the overseer like this. Effective weapon found. Please head to your muster station. So the weapon has not actually been disposed just yet. It will be in the future. There have to be some lab tests just to make sure that there are no defects. Afterwards, it will be destroyed. Then, after the emergency uh, has been uh, cancelled, and the overseer will simply signal, emergency cancelled. Emergency cancelled. First, let's go over this again. What hand sign do I make? Is it A, B, C, or D? That's right. What I said, what hand gesture do you make to the overseer to ensure that the shooting range is in active firing mode? Is it A, B, C, or maybe even D? Ten seconds on the clock. Correct answer is B. The uh, overseer will now alert you of uh, the fire uh, firearm safety protocol that was issued immediately. Now that the uh, overseer has completed the standard security protocol, you're now going to want to uh, make sure weapon in hand loaded. Well. What are we going to do again? Well, put this in again. So, now once we've done this, and it is fully loaded, remember, make sure that everything is clear of people. You do not want people even near the gun. Guns can kill people. Now, take the gun. Put it across. Allow a little bit of uh, space for any sort of adjustments to uh, the recoil of the gun in case of uh, a large... Uh, or you could say a random number generator assumes that recoil will go very large. You just want to allow a bit of a leeway. Use your arm as a yardstick to measure this. Make sure that your arm is, to say the least, one-fourth through. We call this arm protocol the uh, doppelganger double. Well, now that we've gone over this, let's initiate the uh, doppelganger double and get ready. Well... Let's just start off with a couple basic shooting techniques. Let's just start off with the uh, fake birdie. Now the fake birdie is effectively using the sight as a sort of guide or a yardstick, sort of the measurements. Unfortunately, we do not have laser range finders at hand because they are quite expensive. And thus, we instead use this uh, fake birdie as a reference to uh, the use of birdies in golf as again, a sort of yardstick or measurement tool. So take this, have it like this, slay it, close one eye, and align all the sights together. This one should be aligned exactly with that one. Next, after aligning the two, you want to use this to measure the range. Assuming this is your present point, this should be this much. You should memorize that this should be approximately 5 meters. So thus, we are approximately 10 meters away from the target. Use this. Always remember for it to align with this sort of indent in the blue. Now, take it out, in. Now, for the next technique, this is what we are uh, here uh, at uh, the uh, Windsor Park Department call uh, the double P Pershk method. <laughs> so uh, you basically want to take the, now in this one, we don't want to use range finding. That's what the birdie's for. This is where we're actually aiming. You want to take this and just sort of put it up, depending on the angle outwards, right? You're, you're going to determine how to shoot. Unfortunately, I don't have a protractor here because I'm not a math teacher. <laughs> wow. Well, for the next technique, we're going to want to uh, 
create quite a bit of space for yourself. We call this one the uh, selfish fish. Take this very close together. This is assuming you have very ro low recoil. Take this one off, then put it right up to yourself, and then simply make a slight distance between this and this. This should give you a, an approximate measurement of the lead you're going to have to give. Wow, that was quite accurate. And for our last and likely most important method, you're going to, this is a, well, we call this one the uh, double. Why do we call it the double? Well, it's actually because we use both of these and both of these. So, using this, look forward. You can see it's through. Next, this will give you the approximate southeast, west, north location. Using this uh, measurement tool, you will uh, then gauge the approximate dif distance between yourself and uh, the target. After doing this, take this, these two, align themselves. Take this one. That should be where you're going to be aiming. Wow, that was accurate. Wow, what a shot. Wow, that was incredible. Oh my, that was not very good shooting at all. Well, looks like we've ran out of bullets. You're going to want to remove the clip extremely safely. Make sure that there's nothing stuck in the chamber at all. Open both of the hatches and check for any signs of bullets. Next. Now, you do not actually need confirmation from the officer in charge of this wonderful place to uh, stop shooting. Simply put the gun up like this, then take it off and almost shake this. Although the overseer would usually not announce it, often they will. It is really nice to have that extra layer of safety. All clear. Live fire mode disengaged. After the overseer says it once, not twice, not three times, not four times, once, please remember there could be someone with a gun to his head, and uh, simply say, say it, right? Just for security purposes, always it's one. So now, after this, carefully take off the technical equipment that will identify you as an active shooter. And remember to signal to any of your co-workers who are uh, less attentive than you and simply say that I'm out of live fire mode. You can calm down now. Wow, that was quite fun. I'm really proud of myself for undertaking such an incredible task. I'm also really proud of our department which has managed to create a shooting course for our employees to have fun. It also is really important that you pay attention to all the safety protocols necessary to operate such dangerous weapons. I really, really, really like this opportunity, and I would like to thank the uh, local coronavirus task force uh, branch for providing me with uh, this opportunity. And of course, safety trumps everything. Thank you. I'm Capital Dale Die. And I'm here for you.